My father teaches this at a college. He teaches uh, mass communication, persuasion, public speech. He's a wizard. But I know how it works. And if people want to know, I will teach them. And you can look at my life. I bat a thousand. I know how it works. This is Grab Football, pal. Strap on your helmet. This is real. I know how it works. This is real. You are listening to Covert Radio. How you guys doing? This is Covert Radio. And this is brutally honest, fearlessly unapologetic talk radio, bringing the highest level of discerning insight into events, people, and the contrived lies of the demented time. Covert Radio is conducting an investigation to the entity on the screen. His name is... Owen Benjamin, and uh, there's an alleged fraud land scam. Uh, Owen uh, began collecting several hundred thousand dollars. Nobody knows the real amount. It's been estimated to over a million dollars, which makes a lot of sense. Um, This has been going on for several years. This mysterious, uh, (laughs) unbuilt... Um, illusion and delusion is called Bertaria Campground. Uh, however, to date, there's not one clearly demarcated campsite available. Uh, he currently owns uh, over 70 acres. It's 73 acres in two different states, Idaho and Missouri, 20 of, uh, excuse me, 10 of which is his private residence under the same corporation name. Um, Actually, the land is under two different corporations, but we're going to get into that in the, into the next video. Um, the reality of this, though, uh, from all my efforts in looking into trying to find where the campground is, because like I said, he continuously raises money for Bertaria Campground. Uh, Owen's private estate, which sits on 10 acres of the company's property, uh, currently has a value of over one dollar $1.5 million. Owen and his wife are both unemployed. They've been for many years. And uh, this was uh, this was an ongoing scenario uh, until about, I don't know how many days it's been. But there's a brand new episode uh, for Owen the deadline is November the 15th where he's trying to raise another $140,000 roughly to acquire uh, an additional 40 acres. Now, again, all of this land is undeveloped. The only known um, use for it and visible use for it is they, he charges a bunch of people to go onto land in Missouri in the Ozarks. And uh, they pay to go and and sleep in the middle of a hay field. There's no campground. There's no facilities. There's no nothing. They erect a temporary tent. And uh, after the the, uh, weekend, it's all taken away. And they go back to the real business, which is Bertaria beef. And uh, they have cows grazing and hay and, uh, you know, whatever they're doing. But uh, there's still no campground. Uh, Owen is not interested, it seems, in developing a campground. He just wants to use that name, in my opinion, the Bertaria Campground. But he's continuously adding uh, over a million dollars now of real estate to his portfolio. And I don't understand why people are interested. I mean, I, you know, somebody made a comment recently somewhere uh They said, you know, in the beginning of all of this, back in 2020, it made a lot of sense. The trauma of COVID, 
and everybody was uh, thinking more about health and freedom and what that means. And all these heavy mandates came down and, you know, uh, Owen's original pitch was for like a 200 acre compound uh, right off the Canadian border in Idaho. And, uh, you know, where there was, you get two for $400 investment, you get two weeks of uh, camping um, a year. Uh, I mean, you know, he sold this in a method of the fix all to a bunch of people who were already in active trauma. You notice he's having a harder time now. Not only has he's he's been exposed, he's been overly exposed. And not only that, he doesn't have the added uh, effect of free trauma to uh, take advantage of people. You know, trauma that he hasn't induced. So, you know, there's um, there's a lot of questions as to why anybody currently today is interested in paying $400 so Owen can continue to have his beef company cattle graze on property that you bought him. And even at that, you're going to have to pay for any of the beef they're trying to sell. I mean, this is all my speculation based off of a lot of information. You know what I mean? Uh, All we have is speculation because there is no disclosure and that's why I'm involved in this. Uh, there's there's an attack on the general public. The, the general public at large has been targeted by this entity on the screen. And he's wielding a quiver filled with psychological weapons, rhetorical weapons, propaganda weapons in the beginning of this video i play him saying his words that his dad is a wizard his dad is a professor his mother's also a professor but i'm saying what he said in the beginning of this my, my dad's uh you know wizard he's a, he teaches mass communication persuasion public speech And I've showed clips of Owen's dad on C-SPAN and talking about Ronald Reagan and, you know, I was he a speechwriter for Reagan? I mean, I, you know, there's so much information that has been covered about this already. You can go back on my channel if you're new to Covert Radio, Uh, which, by the way, why don't you uh, smoosh, take your finger there and smoosh that like button. Give me that little like button there, a little thumbs up, give that a little smoosh and then Take a finger after that. and No, 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 Owen. Owen, stop. Stop. No, no, not that. Not that. No. Pull your pants up. Yeah. No, not that. Take it and hit that little bell notification. Because we're, we're covert radios. We're, we're having a lot of videos coming out. As you can see, uh, something snapped in my head when Owen started begging for, again, another 40 acres. Uh, that he wants the general public to buy him. And I feel obligated to continue to expose the methodology behind his grift, the methodology behind his daddy's teachings of the persuasion, public speech, or per pervasive, uh, you know, public speech techniques. Daddy was a wizard and... Owen talked in the past about him and his brother and then the dad and whoever would have, uh, you know, point counterpoint debates in the living room over the fire, you know what I mean? Around the fire. That was fun for them. You know what I mean? There's, uh, there's a lot to unpack. And in this video here, now I, I was, I was going to open this up with a scene from National Lampoon's European Vacation with Chevy Chase because there's a scene in that movie where um, they, they, they're looking at, look kids, Big Ben Parliament, and they're in this little rental car in Europe, and they're they gotta and they gotta go around uh, around a roundabout, and. Um, but over there, if you're from America, obviously, you drive on uh, what we consider the wrong side of the road. 
So he's around this roundabout, which honestly is semi fairly new in America anyway. But I mean, this movie's old. So there, he's trying to get left. He cannot get left. He's like, I, I can't, I can, I can just cannot get left. He's like reckoning the cars, and every time they go around the circle of the roundabout, he, he, the joke is, look, kids, Big Ben Parliament. And then da, 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 a couple more scenes of him trying to get left. He can't get left. He's wrecking in the cars. One more time. Kids, look. Ah, never mind. We know Big Ben part. Well, the ne- this next scene, cut. It's it's dark. It's nighttime. <laughs> They're still trying to get around. He can't get out. He's like, he's like going hysterically laughing. He's like, He's in hysterics. He's like, I cannot get left. I just, I can't get left. That's how I feel right now about this next video. I've dropped two big videos. This is the third big video, but this still, none of these are the big video. I'm staring at all of it in front of me, but this is part of it. And I felt... It, it just, it hit me earlier. I'm like, no, I can't. I cannot bury this portion in a two, three hour long presentation. This is way too important. Uh, I don't want it to get lost. And, you know, I want you guys to learn actually what's happening. Double check, triple check what I say. Take notes. You're going to learn something in this. And by the way, if you are new to Covert Radio, uh, this is radio format for the most part. But if I need you to look at the screen, I'll take I'll tell you to look at it. You can notice on the screen here, uh, uh, there's one viewer. This was Owen's live stream a few hours ago. And somebody sent me a link. Because supposedly, I guess this is day two or three now of him so brand new, which is a propaganda technique. And I want to, that's what, see, this is what I want to do. And I've kind of, over these last years, so I don't even know how long I've been covering Owen. Every one of my videos, I've pointed out very, um, I wouldn't say it's obscure, but it's not really common knowledge. Like you really have to be involved with psychiatry psychology or mass communication or media or all of the above to understand and and be able to relate to other people what's happening because most people do not understand the technique the sequence the patterning the five-step method primarily called Monroe's motivated sequence that he's wielding. And again, you I played it in the beginning. I know how it works, right, Owen? I know how it works. There's a system to everything. There's a system to everything. There's a sequence to everything. There's a pattern. I am a pattern discoverer. I don't know how to, I don't know what the word is that I do. I observe, I watch, and then I detect, and I document, and then I convey. On the Covert Radio Tribunal membership page on Patreon, that I've had up since 2016, almost 10 years now. I said, you become a Patreon because I sift through the maddening noise and I give you the bottom line. Essentially, I'm paraphrasing what I said. But I've done this with Owen since day one, but now I'm really going to do it. I'm really, really going to show you. See, because I was like, do they really need everything? Do they really need, you know, I've given you guys a lot of the rhetorical tools that Owen wields, the weapons. I've called it weaponized rhetoric. 
Um, but oh, that's not it. And but I I have not disclosed probably eighty percent of it. I've given you maybe twenty to thirty percent of it because I this isn't a technical teaching course. You know what I mean? A, a semantics course in psychology or psychiatry or you know, Medea the Enchantress. This isn't that, but right now I feel it's so important that the people who listen to my voice understand that so that they can take it and they can reach out and understand and allow their people to understand what's happening. So you can be more aware, more aware of, of these sequences that politicians use, that um, media companies use, that, you know, uh, social media creators have used. But Owen's primary thing, which is very simply put, is called the Monroe's uh, Motivated Sequence. And there's only five steps to it. Attention, need, satisfaction, at, or visual, uh, visualiz- visualization, and action. Attention, need, satisfaction, visual- <laughs> visualization, and action. Owen is very good at getting people's attention and he doesn't care if he has to embarrass himself. He doesn't care if he has to embarrass his family. Uh, he doesn't care. You know, I've, I've called him from day one. He's a contrarian. That's, that is his main method to getting attention is to be a contrarian. And it doesn't matter. It's a, it's a, it's an elevated form of trolling. Contrarianism is really just being a troll. And, you know, he'll pick any topic and go completely against the flow of mainstream just to simply get attention. Look at me. Look at me. Look at me. It's like today at the office, everybody wears, uh, you know, the Hawaiian shirt. It's Hawaiian shirt Friday. Of course, Owen doesn't know anything about that because he's never had a job in his life. Um, but it's Hawaiian shirt Friday. Well, somebody like Owen will purposely come on Friday in a suit and then wear Hawaiian shirts every day that you're supposed to be wearing a suit. He does that for attention. Oh, Owen, you know, it's, it's, it's crazy Hawaiian shirt Friday. I know, I know, I know. I want to wear a suit. Oh, is it? Oh, this is, I bought this in Hawaii. I know. The threads come from Hawaii. <laughs> yeah, it's contrarian. It's it's kind of like, look at me, look at me, look at me. Daddy, you love me yet? Look at me. So he's good at getting attention. Then, and I'm just going to kind of ball this down into the grift, in my opinion, of the land scam where he's collected hundreds, it's over a million dollars. And and proof, proof of that, again, is the fact that he doesn't work. He does not have a job, okay? There's no job, there's no employment, there's no known employment uh, of his wife whatsoever, okay? Yet... He's been able to build from a $200,000 investment on 10 acres in Idaho, which is the sister parcel of where the original uh, Bertaria campgrounds is or was supposed to be. He purchased that for right about $200,000. And right now, today... With the tax records, it's worth $1.51 million. So he's taken your money that was supposed to go for a uh, a campground. And he, he's selling, he still sells this Bertaria campground today. And, I, you know, this is going to be the next video. I'm not getting into this here. But just to uh, solidify that, not only does he not work, he has the odd, he wants you to know 
he's ripping you off. He wants you to know that, in my opinion. If you take a look at this screen, this is Owen, the king, king of Bertaria. And uh, the caption for his, this is his upload. Man, there's nothing like getting my sweet, sweet royalties rolling in. They may as well have sent me one lollipop in an envelope and then a link to where I can donate to the ADL. This was four days ago. Fifty-two cent royalties, eighty-one cents, twenty-three cents, thirty-five cents. I now pronounce you Chuck and Larry. A, a dollar nine, ninety-two cents. Yes, Benny, you guys. One, two, three, four. His royalties from House Bunny is not even barely a dollar. Bucky Larson, child star, whatever, born to be a star, whatever it was. Two cents, four cents, 20 cents. Okay. You under, you see it, right? This is, see, my lawyer told me a long time. It, he wasn't a lawyer. He was actually a retired executive, but he told me, he was like, you know, um, uh, at the end of the day, nothing matters except what's in black and white. And I'm just paraphrasing, but this is real. This is what's in black and white. These aren't, uh, this isn't money being filtered through Coddington in Florida and then, you know, shuffled through the mail system and, you know, cash, cash, silver, gold, this, that, whatever. This isn't that. This is what's provable income, right? Until there's an audit, which it just so happens that LLCs are one of the highest IRS audited entities in the United States, which I'm just putting that out there, but that's for the next video. But he wants you to know this is his work. This is his body of work. He wants you to know he's ripping you off, in my opinion. That is his ego. Or, well, why would you put this out? You're proving to the world you have no income. Yet, you, you're sitting on a $1.5 million estate. Yet you and your wife have no income. And in the next video, I'm going to blow your mind with uh, some documentation that I have. This live stream here is what triggered me to take some things out of what I, th this next video and, and combine them into this one here because it's too important and I, I don't want it to get lost because Owen is a very, 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 very dangerous person. And he uses systems of manipulation, systems of control, just like he said he does. He's not lying. And like I said, the Monroe's motivated sequence, uh, attention needs, satisfaction, visualization, and action. And he's good at getting attention specifically dealing with this campground, he has, oh, guys, guys, what do you think, guys? Guys, what if we had a place to go? What if we had a place? He waited till the per like a snake. The perfect time to strike your mind and all these people's minds who has given him money, money, money. He waited until there was the most massively induced trauma ever in modern times. Wait a minute, how can I capitalize on this? Guys, what if there was a place, you guys? What if we could go and be free? What if we could have parenting, uh, you know, birthing centers? And, and, and uh, I mean, I, there's, I have clips of him going on and on. What's, there's going to be shooting ranges, and they're going to overthrow the local government and have sheriffs and police that are bears installed and... They're going to do this and they're going to have, uh, you know, bow and arrow and weapons and gardening and this and that and this and dancing and this and, you know, calisthenics. And I mean, whatever you could imagine, 
uh, but freedom, freedom, Bertarius, freedom, you know, get away from the mask, get away from the control and the tyrannical control of the, of the jibby jabbers. And you don't have to do that here. We're going to live in the middle of the wilderness on a 200 acre compound. And he showed all these pictures 30, I've showed this all on covert radio, 20, 30, uh, outbuildings and massive, um, sleeping areas and pri- he'd have a private residence. And so he created the need and he gave you the satisfaction, which is basically just presenting the solution to the problem. Guys, we we need to get out of this. We need to get out of the tyranny. We need to get out of the beast system. So there's the need. Here's the here's the solution. It's similar, very similar to the to um, the Hegelian dialectic, problem, action, solution. This is <laughs> attention, needs, satisfaction so far. But there's another dynamic that Owen very much understands, and that's where Adam Camacho came in. Because the fourth critical part of Monroe's motiva- um, motivation sequence is the um, putting the media to it, making it real, enchanting people visually. The visual, the visualization of what he's he wants he's trying to sell you. Welcome to Bertaria. So he activated all these right people with music and media and pictures and cartoons and this and that. And he hired Adam Camacho straight from Hollywood as his brand manager and the director, the producer. Everything you believe is Bertaria. Uh, well, in, in the initial first several couple years was created by Adam Camacho who is is a master uh, filmmaker documentary maker he has film grain studios we just did an interview uh, with him in the last video I'll link that in the description uh, Adam also has an active lawsuit against Owen Benjamin uh, because he he you know well you can look into it yourself. Owen understands greatly. It's not real until you create. You have to give somebody an image to believe in. You have to give them the image. Something to grab onto. You know, that's what commercials do. And I'm not getting into this. This is my expertise, though. But I'm not. That's not what this video is about. Because we'll be an hour into, you know, Sales 101. Where... They want you to envision yourself there. The family in the four by four pulling the camper. Family's great. We're in the wilderness up in the mountains. Family is great. How about a Ford truck? They're putting you in that truck. You and your family in that truck. The the wife and her child and, you know, in... uh, (laughs) In, in the RV and it's the family time sitting around the, you know, the, the one there's a grandparents with the grandson in an RV traveling. It's a drug commercial. So the visual, visual, visualization, visualization is, in, is critical part of this. And he understands that. That's why he went hard and got literally somebody from Hollywood who has a resume 10 miles long. And the key component to Monroe's uh, motivated, mo- motivation sequence is action. Action. Guys, guys, we need to get this. Guys, immediate action, immediate action, immediate action. Guys, we're going to lose this, guys. I mean, guys, you think we can get it? I mean, a million dollars. I mean, you think we could get this kind of money? Or was it 200000 You think we could? Get, I mean, if you gave me 400 I mean, I don't know. You know, you think we? I mean, there was people that gave Owen thousands of dollars. He said, Owen Benjamin said with his own mouth, within 24 hours, they raised over $200,000. Oh, I think it was a million now. I I think the actual, yeah, the campground, this big initial, oh, it was 200 acres. That's what it was. 200 acres. It was like around a million dollars. And that's what he was, oh, do you think we can get, 
you know, X amount of people to give 400. If and he, this is his tactic he uses over and over and over again. He, t- he keeps taking um, the money down into bite sized pieces. And there's always a need for the immediate action help from the audience, help from the audience. All of that is, you know, all, all of the, all of that immediacy is last. It all stands on the shoulders of look at me, look at me. Hey guys, the government tyranny, you know, what would be great is if we had our own place. Looky how nice it can be. We need money. We need money. We need money. Give me money. He said he made over $200,000 in one day. Guys, we got all bid. I covered all of this. Listen to what I'm telling you. This goes so much deeper than Monroe's uh, motivation sequence. I always talk about logical fallacy and his rhetorical weapons that he uses. I want to show you this. And I said, there is a... uh, I'm going to make sure that this is blocked out. Okay. I'm going to prove to you that this is his MO. This is what he uh, did this year. Okay. This is what he did this year, mass communication with all the cult members. And and I want you, we're going to go over so much stuff you've never heard before in this. I'm going to teach you guys stuff that you don't know exist. I promise you that. Stick with me, okay? Um, Take some notes. Smoosh that like button. Hit the little bell. Share Covert Radio. That would be even great, too. Because more people need to know this. The biggest demonic forces on this planet that wield this level of mass communication rhetoric and, and... persuasion uh, techniques and, you know, propaganda is the government and the pharmaceutical companies, okay? So if you have a grip, an understanding of what I'm going to unveil to you, you're going to have a better understanding of how the government and, well, the news, which is the fourth branch of the government, and uh, you're, because, you know, well, we're not getting into that, but, and the pharmaceutical companies, which... They want everybody on something from cradle to grave, okay? So if you understand the techniques and what I'm going to show you in this, you're going to understand that dynamic more than you've ever have in your life. This is what this demonic entity named Owen Benjamin, that's my opinion of a public figure, this is what he sent to the low IQ, mentally ill, celebrity-obsessed cult members this year okay dear legendary members and i want you to to, the buzzwords mean something okay the buzzwords absolutely 100 100 mean something it's called milieu control technique the milieu control technique like i said you're going see this type of stuff i never wanted to get into I've touched about 20 to 30% and not even 20, 28% of the techniques that Owen Benjamin uses because I never felt it was a, a needed dynamic, but it's clear that this person is so dangerous at this point and he's targeting the public with such vitriol at this point. And he's pulling it all out. So I am too, Owen. I will too. This is Grabbler football, remember? This is Grabbler football. Strap in, buddy, right? The milieu control method is going to be talked about with regards to words like this. Legendary members. There's a whole control environment of speech and slang that that Owen Benjamin wields with these mentally ill, low IQ people. And it's the milieu control system. And I'm going to talk about that in a moment. But I want to read this email that went out privately. 
As we prepare for the 2024 Bertaria Times National Festival, these are types of words that the uh, Nazis used. This is the type of propaganda that would go out before uh, the big rallies, the Nuremberg rallies, right? As we prepare for the 2024 Bertaria Times National Con- uh festival and need to meet the contract okay so i see i don't want to do this i don't want to keep doing this stopping but you have to understand how he's including people as if they're included and i talked about this with adam camacho in the last video i said we we there is no we legally in black and white there's only two people And I'm saying from what I've discovered, there could be 5,000, but legally from what I've discovered, there are two people that are we, and that's Owen Benjamin with a myriad of LLCs, including uh, Struggle Bear LLC and uh, Bertaria uh, Holdings LLC. Those are the two uh, main land components that is now kind of being, I don't want to say shuffled around, but all of a sudden, Corporate Bloom Incorporated, uh, which is owned by Sam Mitchell, uh, is now the big component across both states of Idaho and Missouri, dealing with the um, asset properties that are that are acquired by these corporations. That's the, and that's in going to be in the next video. Th- those are the two legal entities that I've discovered. Again, this is an ongoing investigation into a public figure who is targeting the public at large using a mass amount of psychological weapons. Okay. I really want you to understand how dangerous Owen Benjamin is. And I'm going to prove that to you in this video right here. And I'm not going to, I'm not going to talk about, well, I'll show you. I'm not going to talk about it. I'll show you. Whose contract obligation, Owen? Your contract obligation. And at any moment, When you can't squeeze another penny out of these mentally ill people, why don't you go ahead and put up one of the, uh, what now, 70-some acres that you got free and clear, you did not pay for by all accounts, put it up as collateral, get a loan like 99.9% of the rest of the population but yet you want to use your grift and your manipulation and your rhetoric weapons as a flex when you go on podcasts of idiots and tell them, I'm totally debt free. And you have Vampire Vox Day. Yeah, while he lives off daddy's money. Some of it. Anyway, nobody nobody uh, is signing any contracts, right, Owen? So, so why don't you show the people you're soliciting right here in this email, why don't you show them where they signed on the contract, the lease agreement obligation? Pay your taxes to the king. Right? The king of Bertaria sent this for real. Oh, boy. We got to meet the contract obligations this year to purchase 40 acres. We are planning this year's campaign. We have facilitated the purchase so far of 53 acres. Yeah, that's just in Missouri. There's another 20 in uh, Idaho, including the barn and the hunting cabin. We are approximately 30% complete for our five-year goal as the barn in the hunting cabin was uh, the most costly land parcel. In the next video, if you don't know, I will show you the satellite images. So, again, there's no accounting here at all. 
There's no paperwork. There's no website that anybody who wants to invest in this can view documents, can view consignment agreements, can view contracts, can view uh, worth even, land values, tax costs. There's nothing except a bunch of bullshit jargon which again is part of his weaponry. And that's part of his weaponry. It's Brandolini's law, right? Owen, right? See, I'm going to tell all your secrets, sir. You broke something in my brain. And now I'm going to expose you to the point where even people around you are going to start questioning their reality. Owen is a wizard wielding Brandolini's law. And we're going to get into that in a moment. We are approximately 30% complete for our five-year goal as the barn in the hunting cabin was the most costly land parcel. That's a huge accomplishment as we are still in our second of five. Who's we? By November 15th, 2024, we we have to have raised enough money to buy 40 more acres and secure the new yearly lease for the remaining 90 acres. Goals. See what I mean? It's always, always attention needs (laughs) satisfaction, visualization, and action. There's a method and a system of controlling people. Attention, need, what's the satisfaction? What's the satisfaction? We're going to be able to honor our contract, but it's nobody's contract but yours. Action, request immediate money, 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 money. Goals, 40 acres, $128,000 for for rocky desert desolate land with some with some trees on it okay how much is that uh 40 acres 130,000 3 4,000 I don't know what let, let me get my calculator I don't want to guesstimate let's see here 100 we'll say 130 130 Divide that by uh, how much? Forty. Yeah, that's three thousand. It was about thirty-two hundred dollars an acre. So then that would mean we're just get, we're, you're saying the uh, the land that you've already bought with the hunting cabin and the uh, and the barn was even more expensive than that, which was thirty-three acres. So what? Five thousand thirty-three acres times five thousand dollars an acre is $165,000. So, Owen, shove this email up your ass, move your finger out of the way, and go to the bank and put the parcel up of the 33 acres. They will give you a loan for around, what, 80% of that, $100,000? Done. There you go. Can you build the campground yet? Or or you're not going to be able to control yourself and uh, and build a new addition onto your one4 uh, $1.5 million estate now. No accounting. There's no proof of anything. Nothing. Only a wizard using systems of psychiatric control for mentally ill people. Goals, 40 acres, 128000 plus taxes. The lease is 10300 Okay, buy me more land. Here's a potent, not even important, not even the main goal. This should open your eyes. And I know at this point, you bear tards are literally the lowest vibrating entities breathing our air. And uh, I don't think you're going to understand what I'm about to say. It's not even a secondary goal. It's not even a sub goal. It's not even the goal it is maybe we'll buy we'll we'll finally after three years three years 
three years now. Three years, there's been zero development on that land. Other than, I think, somebody built a dome or two this year, but Owen didn't pay for that. You bear tards paid for that. $1,200 each, a class of about six. So, Space Boy trip a lot. The peyote tripping king boy, whatever, I don't know. No neck, no arms. Forget his name. Toper, bloper, whatever his name is. And then when I get Johnny Five, and I mean, like, I like drew him like perfectly, like. <laughs> Space Boy Trip a lot is going to teach you how to build a dome that you could go buy the kit on. Anywhere, any reputable resource, even Amazon, get the kit for $500 to $1,000 for a 12-foot dome and watch a few free YouTube videos. You too could, hey, you don't say that. No, 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 no. You're going to buy the dome. You're going to build it on my land. Then you're going to buy me more land, and I'm going to own that too. Then you're going to next year pay more money to either sit inside of a dome (laughs) that's in the middle of a field with no lighting, no roads, no pavement, no draining, no nothing, no bathrooms, no power, no sure power, no sewage, no nothing. You're going to pay the same amount of money where you could go five miles down the road at an actual campground with a picnic table and a paved lot and some resources and an arcade. Come to the store. Need a poncho? Need this? Did you forget your milk? Your milk go bad? Hey, we got ice. We got this. There's bathrooms. There's showers. There's swimming. There's a pool. There's this. There's recreation. There's safety. There's lighting. That's a couple miles down the road. Three years, none of that exists. Just buy me more land. Maybe. If, if I don't build myself a pool on my, you know, my 10 acres in, in Idaho, maybe we'll throw in, we'll buy a couple permanent Porta Johns and surround them with some stone. It's not even a goal. It's a maybe, maybe we'll get some bathrooms. Do you understand yet, you fucking idiots? Do you understand yet? We get new members every week and have some time, but with November approaching quickly and other potential goals, we need to make a big jump in donations this year. Well, what about the bathrooms? Shouldn't that have been done this year? Year one, instead of your $40,000 paved driveway Owen shouldn't you build a bathroom at the campgrounds you keep manipulating people to give you money for no he doesn't care ladies and gentlemen he doesn't care because he's using a wizard system demonic method of control I've told you two so far the milieu control method and Monroe's motivated sequence of steps. It's undeniable. Some stats. Okay, here's some stats. No real stats, just bullshit. Many hands make light work. Uh, Okay, so, I mean, where are we at? Where's the money? What are we doing? Who's the contractors? Do we have bids? Is it closed bid? Are there bear tards? I'm sure aside from, what do you call them? What's that? Your milieu control method, your control environment of the the builder buddies. Because the milieu method is really just a matter of, of environment control all the way down to speech, slang, dogma, innuendo they control it all they control it all legend crushing gravy bear name verified right this is all the milieu control method 
gammas, builder buddy, gay, this gay, that gay, 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 right? On to Bertaria, right? How do I know that? Manipulation, manipulation, manipulation. We are farmers. A hill to grow on. All of this shit is the milieu control method. And their tactics, their words, its slang, its speech to control the environment and the communication through use of social systems, group language. Slang especially is hardcore in this cult. They have constant inside jokes. Did anybody go into the free stream on Reddit? Or I mean, uh, on Rumble? They'd have no idea. But there's there's 30, 40 sycophant fanboys, mentally ill people sitting in there repeating like these jokes about other members like Saloon and this and all this shit. And what that is, it's a way to identify other group members. It's like a secret handshake. The milieu control method. It's a secret hand, it's a secret handshake, essentially. But it's it's way, way, way more complex than that. And over time, doing this enough, and you could even ask Adam Camacho about this, which was devastating for him. We've talked about this in depth. And that, those interviews are on covert radio. When he, his wife, other people around him kept telling him, you're in a cult. You know that, right? You're, he could not see it. He did not have the eyes to see. And what happens is you become like crushing legend. You know, what is this, Owen? What's this? All oh, two. What is it? Remember I said, uh, remember I said the milieu control when we start, when we first start reading this Dear legendary members, oh, I'm a legend, I'm a legend, I'm a legend, I'm a legend, like Foster Bear. Oh, I can't wait, Rochelle, I can't wait. Oh, boy, I can't wait, that's coming up. You want to talk about Starstruck? Hmm, but all of them offering now their daughters when they know how sick in the fucking head Owen Benjamin is. And if they don't, they're going to quickly learn through the next series of videos coming up on Covert Radio, which I should say now, become a tribunal member. Give me the time to do this more. I, I, I don't know how else to ask. One, two, I'm going to put Rumble and all the other Covert Radio links. If you don't subscribe there, then you don't want this type of information. You need to subscribe to the Rumble because there is going to be Rumble-only exclusive material. And I'm getting to a point soon where there's only going to be Patreon Tribunal member content alone because I know they need the keys. They're the ones that actually need this, the ones who believe in this fight, and they understand what this is, and they want to help educate people on the dangers of people like Owen Benjamin, because some of them that themselves have been manipulated by him. And Adam is one of them. But he would tell you, and he's, he's told us, you know, stories of like, after the fact, after it was all said and done, he was hospitalized. Like it took him, it, it was, it was very uh, traumatic for him. And right immediately after that came the death threats. You know, he talked about this in the last video. I'll, again, I'll link that in the description. Watch the last video on Covert Radio, my interview uh, conversation with, with uh, Adam Camacho, because we touched on that. But see, everything in the milieu control method is all about isolation and, you know, basically turning these people cognitive uh, acceptance. They get a massive cognitive bias that's instilled by Owen and the top brass. These are also CIA tactics. 
in case you want to know. It's brainwashing, brainwashing. And when you control the environment, like I'm going to prove that to you here in a second, but when you control the environment, it's a lot easier because people always want to know, oh, well, the legends are here. The legends are here. Oh, the legends, now they're on Telegram. That's where they're at. So I, I got to make sure I do everything right here so I can get through the next door, through the next door. These are very tactical, manipulating, evil processes to abuse mentally ill people, right, Owen? I'm going to expose you on this level now. Because even Adam, like he talked about uh, going on to Reddit and reporting back, like he even reading it and seeing it on Reddit, he couldn't, you know, it just, it wasn't resonating with him at that point. And I believe it was because of the isolation. I mean, he actually lived on Owen's property for periods of time, directing, shooting, you know, he was employed by him as his main, you know, brand manager. I mean, and everything that entails. And what happens over time is, and why I started getting death threats, I'm a, in quotations, a non-group member. I'm an outsider. And then Adam Camacho became an outsider. And what they do, the cognitive bias gets so thick in these mentally ill bear tards heads that they start to believe that they're superior. They start to believe they're intellectually superior. Whatever daddy believes and says, they believe and say, and what gammas, which gamma is another one of the slang speech, you know, milieu control words, one of, one of the system words, whenever a gamma has something to say, oh, they're idiots, they're stupid, they're evil, let me stroke my beard, let me stroke my beard. We're so intellectually superior, but you, you're so blind, you don't understand that you're being controlled by a demon, by a wizard. There's no logic left with these people. It's been all sucked out and replaced. And I'm telling you, if that 200-acre compound transpired, there would absolutely 100% be a new Ruby Ridge. And the people in that area, they foresaw that. They foresaw that. That's why the massive pushback. And Owen used that to his advantage to train the cult members that, oh, see what the gammas do? They don't want what's good and right and true. While the whole time, all he does is lie, manipulate, use, right? Where'd we leave off? That's a, uh, oh yeah, down here. So some stats, which there's no stats. It's just whatever. We are, with our extending donor base or existing donor base, this is what I talk about at bite-sized pieces. If all of our donors could generously contribute 250 a year to the project, we could meet what, I mean, we could meet purchase requirements each year. That's, and, and here's your bite-sized piece. That's only 63 cents a day for UNICEF. That's only for the price of a cup of coffee. Did you say Owen about people and their shit jobs? I'm going to be playing that in, uh, in the next video. When you were begging for them to join unauthorized. Yeah. That's less than your shit cup of coffee on your way to your shit job like the people who are paying his way through life building his house his property and buying him land he still just continuously just it, it's just insane i mean it's insane it's the daddy the internet daddy none of these sycophants ever had right if half of our donors contributed just 500 a year or just 40 dollars a month 
we could meet our requirements each year. So what do you want me to 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 praise you? Do you want me to call you a legend? Do you want me to just say you're crushing? I'm going to show you how sick and deep this goes. As our members grow in volume, it spreads the weight and lowers these numbers while Owen eats caviar living on a $1.4 million estate. Financial planning. It's safe for us to plan for a 50% tax liability? Where? What fucking planet is that? You just throw numbers out there because these people are idiots and they don't even understand what you're saying. You know what that's called, folks? That's called the Gish Gallop. Again, another propaganda rhetorical weapon, right? Just a rapid fucking series of just numbers and half-truths and lies, misrepresentation, does that, whatever, whatever. Okay, figure it out. He knows none of them are 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 going to fucking take the time to look at... Now, let's see here. In, in Missouri, if I had this amount of money and this much land, let's see here. Now, what would the tax liability be... Yeah, let's yeah, carry the three. Yeah. That's also part of Brandoli, uh, Brandolini's law, right, Owen? I call it bury the lead. You know what I mean? I kind of been talking about it, but I've never really gave you the name. I just say it's bury the lead, bury the lead. That's what Owen does, bury the lead. And then it's up to you, if you like covert radio, if I want to break my back digging it up. It's called the bullshit uh, asymmetric principle. The bullshit asymmetric principle, right? Brandolini's law. Okay, so I'm just going to say this, and I'm going to say, you know, it's safer for 50% tax liability, and then if it's uh, 500 a year at 40 a month, then... This and that, and then 35 to 45 for this, and we're going to have some bathrooms, but don't forget about buying me the 40 acres, this and this and this and that and that and this and this. And then in this state, the law is it. The amount of energy to refute this bullshit is, and, and not be paid for it. I, this is not my job. <laughs> this is not my job. And he knows that. And he especially knows the bear tards will never even begin to try to do something like that. We have received quotes ranging from, well, so what bear, who, what, which one, which one of your LLC inside companies is going to be switching the money around for that, right? We have who who are the who are the companies? Where's their where's their resume? Where's their work? Where's their portfolio? I maybe I want to see uh, if I can get a couple contractor quotes in there. It's all bullshit. Five bathroom complex. It includes male and female bathrooms with approximately five showers and five toilets. You know what's missing from this? Sewage, water lines, uh, water supply, um, you know, <laughs> drainage. Is there leaching there? Is there a septic system? Do you have to dig tanks or you got to put tanks in? Is there a septic system? Are you tapping into some sort of a public utility? It's all bullshit. He knows that people would want to have a bathroom. Again, back to Monroe's, Monroe's sequence. The, the, the attention, oh, bathrooms, bathrooms, you know, when they need, we need bathrooms, right? Attention, need. What's the satisfaction? Oh, you can be here now for three days and not have to, uh, I'm going to the woods to take a dumple stilt skin. I'm going into the smelly portage, John. Oh, okay, so there. Oh, look at the stone. Did you, did you, let's see here. Did you stone brick this one and flowers and freshly planted daisies on the bathrooms? Let's see here. No, you just gave a number. Okay. Cause that's coming next. Next they'll have stonework and 
family portraits in real wood, real cedar trim with, yeah. And so that's the visual visualization of, of the, of the, you know, brick porta johns and then money. We need more money, money. Three years going on to four, not one fucking bathroom, not one shower. Bertaria campgrounds Four years, not one shower, not one water fountain, not one RV hookup, but they charge the same prices that actual campgrounds do. Because you're a legend crushing. Hey, bear, bear tard. Look at the gammas. Covert radio is a gamma. <laughs> I want to be a builder, buddy. Did I pay my gay away, BB? BB, where do I pay my gay away today? It's all called milieu control, okay? Milieu control methods. Did daddy teach you that too, Owen? Did daddy wizard teach little wizard that? Or did you learn that all by yourself? So all the shit I told you, I mean, yeah, it would whatever. It'd be, uh, it'd be all right. But, but however... Please buy me more land. That is the most important. Your money goes to my pocket to buy me land so I can buy now my cowboy hat and be a rancher and have a cattle ranch. This year's campaign. We, and I'm not spending more time. We have dedicated to offer new and alternative rewards in the way of exclusive merch to help incentive. <laughs> We have created merch rewards for anyone looking for support. Uh, existing members will, rec will be receiving a $400 discount <laughs> to go on to land they already bought. Fucking believable. I covered all this too. Is this the one with the $10,000 bench? Yeah. $500 hoodies or something. We are working on bulk coupons. Okay. Bulk coupons for what? For what? $15 Bertaria beef grass-fed burger on land that I bought, eating hay that I bought, eating hay that I, I cut with my hands and rolled up without his shirt on because I'm a builder buddy under banker boy permies watch. Oh, oh, oh. Mm. If you need any help with giving me money, please reach out as soon as you can to give me money. We have people ready to... Who? Sam, right? I've proven that before. They all go to him. This is the real reason I wanted to do this, okay? This is what spun me out again. Like I said, I, gotta, I'm, I personally have to do this because I might not make it through a whole... If I didn't break these down for myself, I don't think I'd make it. Because right now, I'm pissed and my heart's racing. Because the vast majority of you do not understand what you're up against. And you don't understand how fucking dangerous Owen Benjamin is. And dealing with the Brandolini's law and... You know, the milieu control. This is definitely milieu control. I just want to point this out. Where is it at? Okay, so this is Coddington. Let me see. Can you guys see that right here? Yeah, look at my mouse right to the right of the screen. Okay, so somebody was talking about, let's see here. Thank you, Cod, something. Okay, dude, people are so ungrateful. The super chats and relevant comments I will send to BB. So it's whatever the handler of the, the money man, the, the, the bag man, Coddington. So this goes to show you, you these, these people on Rumble, they mean nothing. Okay. That's again, this is the front door. To be a legend and crushing and start getting some of the inside jokes you got to go to wherever BB is. He only reads the uh, chats on Telegram. I'm I'm the I'm the filter here. Coddington says super chats and uh, relevant comments, whatever he deems as relevant. I guess I send to BB. Thank you, Cod. Thank you very much. So Owen reads from the Telegram private chat. There it is. 
So to be a crushing member, legend, bear tard, builder, buddy, gay, gay, whatever on the hill, bear curia, blah, 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 in the saloon, you got to pay for it, I guess, because it says private. And then another paywall? Is that what that is? Owen reads from Telegram private chat. That's it. So he doesn't care what the public says. You got to pay. Okay, let's see here. Okay, so, you know, here's another uh, question I have. Why, who's this? Asagio, I don't know, whatever, something, something, bear. Okay, yeah, you're doing great, kid, right? That's milieu control. That is slang. That's part of the whole, you know, innuendo, the, the dogma of the bear tard cult. You're doing great, kid, right? That They all know what that means, right? $100. Why are you giving a millionaire $100? Why are you giving a millionaire $100? Huh? You don't know, do you? See, I know why. Number one, the meal you control you're under. You're doing great, kid. That's your, that's, that's your cognitive bias, right? That's, that's what you've been trained. You're trained. You speak the language, gravy, just here for gravy. Somebody was saying that too. Where's it at? It's like, it just makes me fucking sick to read this. Let's see here. Something about gravy, gravy, something here, right here. Uh, I just want the gravy of the day. Always been here and enjoying the show for the gravy Never cared about the audio quality because it wasn't gravy. It was, it was always good enough. So, again, milieu control. There's, uh, you know, a lot of systems of control that Owen wields. A lot of weapons. Brandolini's uh, law, the Gish Gallup. He's, he's, a, he's a, a master manipulator, in my opinion. But. This Monroe sequence that he's, you know, wielding almost daily trying to get this, uh, you know, the the dream of bear. That's what the the infomercial is with the, you know, the big video that me and Adam went over in, in our last, in the last covert radio video. Watch that because that's the new uh, visualization. That's the new picture. Picture, and that's why the kids are playing Frisbee in the field, just fields of children running around. Okay? It, it's, it's nothing but a delusion. It's a delusion to pay him money to make his way through life and make him more of a millionaire. Request immediate action. I need money. Money, money by the 15th, right? Here's here's what sparked all of this, okay? I call this character conditioning. I call it so brand new, okay? And it, and it, I swear if I hit play on this, because I'm the only one here. This was live hours ago. It says one viewer. I'm the only one here. This was the actual live stream. Uh even though somebody sent me the link, I went through and I seen 27 minutes and it was just, guys, how's my mic? Guys, how's my, and he's going on and on and on and on about this microphone. And I could tell you from the, from the, um, when the, uh, the windscreen there that it's a sure, it's a sure microphone. It's a standard mid range, uh, microphone. And honestly, I've played some of this to hear the difference. I, I mean, yeah, I hear it a little bit, but whatever. Okay. So here's my perception of this and, and how wicked and everything I just told you, the systems of manipulation and control that he used, that he uses every day. There's a technique in rhetoric. It's a logical fallacy called plain folk, plain folk. Okay. And Again, part of the mass communication that daddy knows and taught him, part of the persuasive public speech that daddy has taught him, the rhetoric daddy has taught him. I personally know people who use this weapon and they are, they're masons, okay? They are masons. 
They're not 33rd degree Masons, but they are Masons. And I've talked about the, I've talked about my family in, in covert radio broadcast. All right. I, I've given this name over the years. I call it the bumbling fool. And I'm not saying that's what the Masons at the higher levels call it, but it's actually technically called plain folk. It's called plain folk. And it's used all the time. It's a logical fallacy. And we all know from my work, from other people's work, who have gotten, in, gotten into this aspect of uh, Owen Benjamin, um, we've talked about logical fallacy in depth. Made by Jim Bob has definitely talked about Owen's use of logical fallacy and the techniques that surround that. But plain folk, which I call in a Masonic realm, is the bumbling fool, the bumbling old man. It's character conditioning, okay? And this is a very real thing, and I want you to pay attention because that's what he's doing. And Owen is good at it because if you noticed in in something recently he did, uh, one of the promos trying to sell his special, he talked about and jokes that you would swear were like something like we 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 have the innocence of a child or that are written from the perspective of an innocent child. Okay, this is a lunatic you're looking at but he's trying to convince you using a logical fallacy uh persuasion technique it's actually a propaganda technique called plain folk the plain folk is character conditioning i've also called it so brand new and what he's doing is attempting now to again he's reinventing himself i've been talking about this the last several covert radio broadcast. He's intentionally reimagining, altering, and putting a lot of effort into the new character of Owen Benjamin. It's a whole new character. It's a whole new personality, right? And... What he's doing here is is going here. I'll actually play it for about a couple minutes. If it plays, I don't know. And the doctor does this. <sighs> number one or number two? And you go, oh, definitely better. And you're like, which one? And then he freaks the fuck out. Okay. The the computer mic echoes now. It probably already had. Oh, oh, sorry. I edited it. Ha ha. It's okay, Anchor. Uh, new mic is much better. Please continue your COD rants with it. Computer mic is crap by comparison. Computer mic is just more familiar. Everyone will get used to the new mic. Yeah, who knows? Maybe I go back to the computer mic. Maybe this becomes a pain in the ass. I don't know, okay? Let's get into the gravy. Let's start with Super Chats. I got a bunch of letters, which are great. I really appreciate it. Um, and I have uh, Nick Fuentes. Assaulted a woman who came to his door, but I, I actually have his back, which is funny. Slavery was just, again, made legal. Uh, and then the Christmas spirit. Perhaps our phones aren't helping with these variables. No, the phones matter, Sun Cook Bear, because I want you to have a good experience listening. And I'm only being a dick because, uh, because it's funny. I'm not actually mad. Oh, okay. that's right. You're you're some- you're a comedian. Yeah, that's the, you notice how he always does that too. That's his uh, that, that's his go to get out of jail. I'm a, I'm a comedian, just like how he tried to use his bullshit, uh, you know, Gallup, uh, <laughs> Gish Gallup technique by um, you know, the Brandolini situation where he's burying the lead. I call it bury the lead. It's you know, you gotta break your back to dig it up. Uh, that's what he, that's what caused me to, to go ape shit the other day with the, uh, you know, and I want to give Owen a warning here. Let me tell you something, Owen. All right. Never go full. Never on the internet. I'm saying never, ever again, go full yellow raincoat. Okay. And, and this is actually for everybody out there in internet world. Never go full yellow raincoat. Okay. Um, because, uh, yeah, you don't you don't ever want to go full yellow, full yellow raincoat. You don't want to be in that area. But 
the the whole premise behind that video was really the Brandolini's uh, technique that he uses with just basically bullshit. Uh, you know, it's a half truth is what it is. It's like, and I don't know, just something like somebody put this three second clip on the interwebs and it was like something about my dad. And it was like, it lives forever on the internet. Don't you know? And it was like my dad and like, I don't know, my godfather were like, I don't know, something about the, my, the, my dad was gay or something. I don't know. What, I don't know. I don't know. I don't know. Something like that. I, I don't know. So what you have to do now, and, oh, he made, yeah, and then he went, he took it a step further with, uh, I, I, I dare you, I dare anybody, sh you know, show the evidence, show the evidence. I will gladly put it up. So right there, it just minimizes all the bear tards. Again, with their cognitive bias, they just accept all oh, these gammas, the gammas, milieu control, milieu control, the gammas, you know, daddy said, just, of course, they're not going to put up proof because daddy never lies. So here we go. And I'm like, you're not going to do that to covert radio, Owen. I will make you eat your words. Went full yellow raincoat. And uh, you're not going to do that to me, sir. You're not ever, ever going to do that to me. I will spend the energy to refute your bullshit at this point. Because you're an extremely dangerous predator. You're an extremely dangerous predator predator in my opinion see that's why i didn't want to hit play on this some computer mic in the oh yeah how he's just, he's just a comedian just a comedian yeah that, that's what he, he he tried to back it up also with that he was like i mean you know guys it's like i'm a comedian i really touch on deep topics you know i think out of the box a lot he tried to just explain it away, emphasize on a bunch of other arbitrary, exclusive bullshit other than, you know, the reality. He knows what he said. He knows what he did. And he knows it was selfish. He outed his dad publicly, supposedly for the first time. But now I'm finding other proof that Owen has known for since the early 2000s that his dad was gay. And he kind of mentioned it publicly. Well, not kind of. Here, we'll look at it right here, right? Come on, buddy. Let's go. Here, where is it at? Let's see here. Here we go. Remember uh, MySpace? You guys remember MySpace? Here we go. Owen Benjamin, official MySpace, right? He's wearing a Guinness 2002 uh, shirt. MySpace.com, Owen Benjamin. Can you guys see that? Let's see here. Can you see that? Yeah. Here, I'll blow that up. MySpace.com. Owen Benjamin. There he is. There we go. Now, television, Arrested Development, Kirby or Thuz. I don't remember any of him being. Oh, that must be. Yeah, that's what he likes. He likes Arrested Development, Kirby or Enthusiasm, Always Sunny in Philly, Quantum Leap. Okay. Now, Heroes, Mommy. Okay. Now, see again. This is from the early 2000s, 2001, 2, 3, okay? <laughs> 20-some years ago, 20-some years ago, heroes, can you guys see this? Yeah, okay. My mom, my penis, and the dude who invented the fanny pack. Waka waka, Hong Kong, weird. Status in a relationship here for networking. Hometown, Oswego, New York. Oh, right here, he's six six. Okay, I guess you grow. In <laughs> White, Caucasian, Gemini, drink, smoke. No, yes, smoke, drink. I mean, children someday. Occupation: straight gay guy occupation straight gay guy weird owen benjamin schools sunny 
collegiate Plattsburgh, da da da, alumni, bachelor degree. In history, a minor in communication. Okay. 98 to 2003. Okay, so maybe this was like 2009 because there's a comment here. Congrats on your engagement. I just saw it on the news on Channel 9 website. First of all, that seems fake because I don't know who would have to go to that like level. Most normal friends or friendly people would say, congratulations on your engagement. Oh, maybe it was hometown. Okay, yeah, I forgot. This is 2009. This is when Owen was a working entity under the Zionist Corporation of Owen Benjamin Inc. Yes, okay. There we go. And I and I and I've said like you know he he definitely every time he came home to Oswego he was he was royalty. Local man makes it big in Hollywood. Local resident Owen Benjamin Smith has Hollywood comes to Oswego. You know what I mean? Like this has probably happened to him five or ten times. So yeah, that's funny. March 9th, 2009, engaged? Can gay people do that? That's from Krista. A female says that. Most most women don't talk like that, right? My parents, this is a a movie or a video. Um, This is a documentary about my parents and how they met. Watch the whole thing. My dad acts real gay. Okay. Let's see here. September 8th. Uh, two th- so I guess this is just random comments over the beginning decade of 2000. So, yeah, about 20 years ago. Why couldn't you just be a straight man who sleeps with gay guys? Okay. March 18th, 2009. Hi, Owen. I always warned you to be both happy and successful. Oh, I always wanted you. I'm so glad that you have both happiness and success because you deserve it. Okay, from Scorpio gal. All right. What's this? Who I'd like to meet. This is Owen. Poppies, rainbows, bunnies, butterflies, lollipops, and people that aren't trying to brutally kill me. Boy, that sounds, yeah. That sounds straight, straight masculine male right there. About me, I'm a man, a man's man. Mm -hmm. The kind of man that isn't scared to drink a Smirnoff ice in public. The kind of man that likes steam rooms in the occasional episode of Grey's Anatomy. What I'm trying to say is I'm a straight man that does gay things. Zoo orgies. I guess that's a group he's involved in or something. What's this? Owen Benjamin's latest blog entries. My dog does cocaine. Waka waka. Drunken basketball. Waka waka. Zoo orgies. The day I realized I was a hipster. We know you're a hipster, dude. Yeah. So this is uh, Owen's uh, MySpace, right? Here we go. Even forget why I brought that up, but uh, yeah, we're going to continue. Makes, that makes an echo. Like, watch this. That's an absolute nightmare. Watch this. Hey, that's what happens if you add in the computer mic. Okay. Um, thank you, sir, from Danny. Thank you. Bunny Galore. Thank you for playing Nobody Home. Congrats. You know, speaking of Bunny Galore, is that the, or is that Bunny Bear that uh, allegedly let her son die from neglect? Is that bunny galore? Is that that bunny bear? Is bunny galore bunny bear? She's, it's been told to me, and I'm saying this comes from inside information that, you know, this is basically the female Coddington for real, uh, the bunny bear. And again, this is allegedly, I have no proof of this whatsoever. I mean, I have enough on my plate, uh, but bunny bear supposedly, uh, let her son or allegedly, I should say, let her son die from neglect. And she also has some sort of like brain tumor or brain disease or something. So, again, this is the caliber 
We're going to keep showing you who these people are because you're going to understand what you're involved in. Cognitive bias and all. You're in a trance. You're in a cult. On the new setup, please try NPR voice with the new mic. Much love, Bunny Bear. Can you do anything from Green Day, American Idiot, or Boulevard of Broken Dreams? No, I don't know Green Day because I'm not a aggressive homosexual. Legendary Bear says, It's been one year to the day since I requested Braveheart Piano play from BB on episode 1816, 2 hours 36, for those who want to watch it. Only cost 150 LOL, but it was totally worth it. Encore, encore. So anyway, <laughs> anyway, oh boy. The point of this, you guys, is plain folk, mind fuck, logical fallacy, erratic rhetorical weapon. That's what I'm talking about. This is his brand new character, the piano playing podcaster. Remember when? Remember when? Remember when I was the piano playing podcaster? Isn't he sculpts every one of these. Every one of them are handpicked. It's character conditioning. And I'm going to tell you something. The reason why I'm saying that is not just it's not just them. I'm going to I'm going to show you something else, okay? It's 2024. When you're somebody like Owen Benjamin, who is again in my opinion He's, he's manipulating a bunch of low IQ, mentally ill people. And his job right now, and it's been ever since the Google gobble one of us that I uncovered or I, you know, I, I discovered, I should say, the tomato ceremony was actually a cathartic ceremony for him to lower his status to everybody under that tent. That is the logical fallacy plain folk. That's what that is. He's doing it again to reinvent himself, reinvent his character. That he's not a he's not a scam artist. He's not manipulating you. His daddy wasn't a wizard or gay or so I don't know. I mean, these people come up with these crazy three second clips that are all out of contact. He's trying to bury the past, bury who he is, so this new character can come out of the ashes and continue to rob people. My in my opinion. Here's the reality of Mr. So Brand New with his microphone. Should I talk right into the microphone? Can you guys hear me over here? Can you hear me back here? How about here, 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 here? How about this? Oh, gosh, golly gee, what's this button? How about I talk like this right into the microphone so I can give you my NPR voice? Oh my goodness, I'm so brand new, you guys. I don't what is a podcast? Gee whizzikers. I I never set up a microphone. But here's the reality, sir, Mr. So Brand New. You've been podcasting since 2014. That's like a doctor writing prescriptions for 10 years with a broken pencil, and he won't sharpen it. And every other doctor is are using, you know, $500 handmade pens. But you're going to continue to use a broken pencil because A, you don't care. B, that wasn't your necessary main revenue. But now you've realized that this is your main focus. You have to sharpen your pencil to manipulate people. But you have to do it in a way so it doesn't seem obviously threatening. So you got to play plain folk, right? Oh, my goodness. I mean, I don't know what happens if I get right on this mic and I read some letters. I don't even know. Yeah. Oh, so brand new. Listen here, sir. I have your very first episode. 
2014. It was called Caesar Salad. Oh, and you remember that one? December the 12th of 2014. You remember that? Remember that? Yeah, uh, it was called Caesar Salad. This was his first podcast. He's been doing this for over 10 years. But now all of a sudden, oh, the new mic, and I'm just so, what's this button for? Guys, please bear with two or three days now, he's trying to check the mic. Because he's creating a logical fallacy that he's so brand new. Guys, let's grow together, you guys. Let's be legends together. We, we, us, us. It's all milieu control methods. Right, Owen? Right. Remember this? Why didn't they laugh? Hello, this is my first podcast, and I am very excited because I have grown to like podcasts a lot. I never did one before because I didn't understand them. I just listened to the radio. But now I listen to podcasts, so I want to make one. This is called Why Didn't They Laugh? Because it's looking at the underbelly of comedy. Like when jokes don't work. Sometimes you can just pull a joke out of the air and it just works. It just it's almost like it existed before you grabbed it and it was just meant to work. But I'd say the majority of times, uh, it doesn't really work at first. Or you get some giggles, but it's not strong. So basically, I'm going to show my process of writing jokes. From the first time a joke bombs until it works. Because I can just record the audio of my sets. It doesn't take a lot of memory on my phone. And it's fun. The first joke happened in Tampa. I just found out that the sitcom I've been on for the last three years had been canceled. And it was devastating. Because I really loved working with those guys. And they're my best friends. And it was sad. So I was kind of in a bad mood. And I'm on stage. And... I started thinking about legacy and, uh, well, I, I actually kind of want to start every podcast with a joke from my dad. Here's my dad telling a joke. Well, I talked to my anthropology friend and he said, well, John, you always have to remember if you're a member of royalty, no matter what culture, you always have advantages. I said, oh, that must be true. Right, he said. And I said, well, as the old saying is, once a king, always a king. But once a knight should be enough. <laughs> Grasp my pearls, Mr. Smith, you naughty, naughty, naughty boy. No, he, you can't tell, Owen. You can never tell. Of course you fucking knew your whole life. Oh. <laughs> okay, that's my dad telling a joke. He's kind of fruity and super funny. He's a professor. Um, has a lot of nightgowns, but that joke kind of got me thinking, um, that this podcast episode should be about legacy, you know, like once a knight ought to be enough. Once a king, always a king. My dad's fruity little joke has a deeper meaning than his just giggles and wiggles. So on stage one night in Tampa, the crowd was pretty hammered and I just start kind of going on a rant. And here it is. I think the root of a lot of people's misery is uh, over controlling their life. Like they, they're they stress because they're trying to control their shit. They're like in control. Have you ever thought about like the fact that nothing fucking matters because your legacy is up to chance? Julius Caesar, right? Greatest general of all time. All time. First real emperor of Rome. What does he get? A salad. He gets a salad. The Earl of Sandwich gets the whole fucking lunch menu. 
See, to me, that's fucking hilarious. Okay, Christopher Columbus goes across the ocean first, takes all the chance, right? Is this called North and South Columbia? No, it's called America, named after the dude who made the map 10 years later. So who gives a fuck about anything? All right, that's a little intense. Okay, we can see that there's a lot of mistakes made there. Saying who gives a fuck about anything is not a good thing to say in a joke, typically. I mean, some comedians could get away with it, not me. That's really depressing. It's never a good sign when you have to tell the crowd that you think it's funny. And you'll hear people laughing. <laughs> I can't take this. Oh, my God. Everything he does from... You know, it's funny listening to this song. I don't, you know, I don't know, man. I don't, it's so sad. It really is. You know, it's almost like, I don't know. I had, I had a friend. Okay. <laughs> I'm going to tell you this real quick. And then we're going to get into something so serious that it could, I'm laughing because it's, it's literally unbelievable that I'm one of the only voices at this level. And don't get me wrong. I love Liz Antoinette, Tex, uh, Texas Goat, and so many. Johnny Arcade is dope, and Alan is unreal. I mean, I'm, there's so many. There's people that came before me, you know what I mean? And um, uh, I'm just saying, like, it's so sad in a way if it wasn't so tragic. And if you combine both of those to the reality of seriously how knowingly dangerous he is, but he doesn't care, is angering. So there's an array of emotion. As much as he tries to wield and control mechanisms and systems of psychiatry and psychology to control people's perceptions and actions and words and locations and finances and as much as he does that for real is as much as I wonder like you know he said legacy he's oh you know I lost my job the sitcom got canceled and I, I immediately started talking about legacy or weren't worrying about legacy I don't even think he had he didn't have kids then or maybe he did. I don't know. He was just about to have kids. Or I don't think he had any kids yet in 2014. I don't know. But I don't think he did. I feel like Owen's the type of person that needs a Tesla. And what I mean by that is I had a friend. I still have a friend. We, we've been friends for 30 some years. And he always had a broken left arm or a broken right arm. Like he'd, he'd break his arm like once every six months, one or one or the other arm. And he drove a little S10, Chevy S10, that was a five speed. And I don't know how many people here drive uh, manuals, but you have a clutch, you have gas, you got to shift. And it's constant work. Like, um, I've had several in my life. Uh, the, the one I love the most, I had a, uh, red, I had a red LX Mustang LX that was the Fox body custom, uh, custom Chrome hammers. Like it had the Celine effects on it. So the custom exhaust Chrome would come through the ground effects, blacked out tint, like 3% tint. I had a all black leather, blah pont, like a blah pont, uh, sound system in it. It was, I couldn't even use first or second gear. This car had so much power. And once you get used to a manual, you can really shift without a clutch. As long as the RPMs are high enough and you know the motor and the transmission well enough, uh, the only time you really need to clutch is when you're starting out from a dead stop. And even at that, I'd always start out in, in third gear mostly because that's how much power. It was a it was a 5.0. But anyway, my my buddy had a uh an, a Chevy S10 and it was a five speed, and he'd always have a broken arm. Like all through high school. He had it was like always, what'd you do now, dude? And um he was always wrecking his truck. Now, this dude 
was sl- like slow, basically. Very good, hardworking dude, but he was slow. Not slow as in like special classes, but slow like a good old Southern boy. Like, well, let me think here. You know, he he talked slow. He walked slow. He was just, but he wasn't stupid. It was just he was slow. And he did not have the mental capacity to drive a standard. He could, and God forbid if cell phones really existed like they do now, he'd probably be dead because he just did not have the coordination, the hand-eye coordination of foot, clutch, off the gas, put it in the next or last gear, shift up, shift down, you know, ease off the clutch, step on the gas. He just did not have it. In every one of his accidents where he didn't really ever hurt anybody, it was like he'd wrecking a wall or you know, have to look down to see what gear he's got to go into and then he'd rack into a guardrail. It's like, and his arm was always down. That's why he would, he broke his right arm a lot, but he just did not have the coordination. And, and Owen here talks about legacy and, you know, I'm where I just came off of my, my, you know, my, my, my million millionaire job, whatever he was made. I mean, sitcoms, you make a decent amount of money, a few hundred thousand, uh, and then he's worried about his own legacy. and But it's like, well, what about now? Don't you see what you've done? It's like when you try to take control of it, you wreck it. Everything you've touched, you've destroyed. Everything you've touched, you have single-handedly destroyed. In my opinion. From my observation, what I know. And that's that trajectory is only going to keep going because you are in the exact same flight pattern as your daddy. And like I said in the video before last, don't ever go full yellow raincoat. Dude, how long before your oldest son does that to you? For 100% real. And then how long is it before Amy comes out and says what she knows? You're never going to convince me you're a good guy, Owen. You're never, because unless you're a literal certifiable, and this is all my opinion, unless you are a literal certifiable sociopath, a, a psychotic individual to the point where you can compartmentalize. You know, it's like I'm a big Sopranos fan. I've wa- I binge watch all six seasons at least once or twice a year. And there's so many studies about the character of, of Tony Soprano and his level of psychopathy, his level of, of his, you know, his sociopathy. He... It was impossible for him to be a good guy. It was impossible for him to be a good husband. Hence the divorce. It was impossible for him to be a good father. It's impossible. Because you can't have that level of psychopathy and compartmentalize it to a point of Opposite, like just an opposite spectrum of emotion, an op, op, um, opposite spectrum of, you know, uh, dedication. Like you're never going to convince me of that. So if this is how you act to public, if this is how you act to people who who are paying your way through life, who have put you in a one point five million dollar estate, you mean to tell me you can compartmentalize this vicious? vitriol this hate this deep whatever it is inside of you this darkness you can compartmentalize that and you're the saving grace of your family you will never convince me of that sir you're a very 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 dangerous person and i've talked about the spirit that you've activated 
this spirit, this thing that never leaves, leaves this realm, the same thing that has infested Jonestown. Because the last visions, the last two visions of what you consider is the representative visualization of the dream is dead. It's death. Funeral lighting, death. Drab brown, green, velvet, death. Dreary dead trees and leaves and rolling in storm clouds, death. That's what you're creating. The spirit is encompassed, all of you. And you're never going to convince me otherwise. It's only to what level now are we going to go? Because you're activating extremely dangerous people like this guy here. I'm, hello, lady. You're a pretty lady. A real man ever seek you out? I want a strong man to touch me. Don't touch me. Who do you think you are? You're not strong enough for me. You're not. The pilot of a Southwest Airlines flight from Orlando to New Orleans requested that a passenger be taken off the aircraft after he started yelling obscenities from within the plane. A 44-year-old man was trying to share his political and religious beliefs with other travelers, which was creating a terrifying commotion. The man screamed at passengers if you are a man, you wouldn't be wearing masks. Police boarded the plane to escort him off. The subject resumed his strange tirades after being taken out by the cops. You're bold. Nice. This guy's Cut it up. Let's go. Cut You're it tough. up. I like Cut it. Cut it up. Talking? Cut Mike, I'm gonna sue you. All right. You're getting sued. Let's, let's, let's I'm gonna be a multi. Okay. Why are you touching okay. me? You're gonna hit that deck in a minute. I believe you. You, you gotta hit that deck. I believe you. Don't ask me. Don't ask me. My God's it. tougher than you. Okay. Take your mask off. Come and I need to see your ID. Don't play with me. Look, I'm okay. not. You're a big right. guy. Do you think I'm afraid of you? I don't want you to be this afraid. I'm dying for the Lord. Is. All right. I will lay down my life in my prayer. Hey, can you guys send one of y'all um, reps to see if y'all want to put him on a no-fly list? Well, I just need his name. That's all I had to do. Once I get his name, that's it. Hey, you're the only one with the boss. He thought he was tough. Where is he? I thought you were tough. Stay right here. You better stand back over there. If you come up here, you're going to get hurt. He won't touch me. You don't know who I'm talking about. You watched pornography, didn't you? Don't touch me again. Hey, what are you going to do? If you you think you you think you're bigger than God. Ask him. Don't touch me again. You understand that? Are you bigger than God? Do you understand what I just said? I can do whatever I want. This man ain't even half the man you. You're the biggest man in here. And look, he got his. I'll talk to you. What, you don't touch me, dude. What do you gonna do? do? Do it. What y'all heard on TV last night? You're done. Put your hands behind your back. Put your, put your hand behind your back. Y'all are assaulting Put your me. hand behind your back. Where's the real man? Put Any your... real man passed this test. Y'all are oh, oh, what did I say? Oh, yeah, this is great. Y'all are all done. Any woman in here, this is what a man does for his daughter. Anybody looks at a daughter with lust to their heart, they're a fucking pussy. Thank you, Owen. Owen Benjamin told me to say that. He's going to be my best friend. You know what? That man is a real man. Calm down. I'm not, I'm, this is normal. This is a conversation. You just don't have any. He's gonna be my best friend. You know, daughter with lust to their heart. They're a fucking pussy. Thank you, Owen. Owen Benjamin told me to say that. He's gonna be my best friend. You know what? Owen Benjamin told me to say that. He's gonna be my best friend. You know I don't think you understand the probability of the coincidence of the dynamic of the daughter lust in their eyes any man would do this and owen benjamin i have a video coming up and it's just unreal it, it's gonna deal with foster bear but also a lot of other things there's a problem in bertaria This is by no coincidence. And the probability of a guy who would say those words in that sequence, you could, you could not calculate that out of the billions of people that are on this planet. 
Not in, not only that, not only that. Adam Camacho uh, mentioned this guy on our, our last conversation video here. This is another sycophant fanboy, um, Bertard, who the spirit that is encompassing Owen and these people, this is an, this is of that realm. And this is another lunatic, in my opinion. Uh, they're talking about, um, Owen, this is made by Jim Bob and he asked, this is four months ago. I don't, this is what this says four months ago. Uh, are you the Andrew and they're, they're going back and forth about Owen. This is after the, uh, the blow up between Jim Bob and Owen. And, you know, this is, this is very, uh, typical. I, and I've seen this a hundred times now of all these lunatic bear tards coming after Adam coming after Jim Bob. I see it constantly. They've given me death threats. I get random emails and messages and all this crazy shit all the time. I don't even talk about He's a good man. And then Jim Bob says, are you the Andrew Hess by chance who didn't get charged for killing a man? Liz, uh, this was on Liz's channel. And then here's the A. Hess. Yes, I killed an L.A. County sheriff when I was 15. There was an investigation and I was exonerated. Dude, that's creepy. How did you find that information? <laughs> he was saying, it's public information. Andrew Hess? What do you think you kill an LA County sheriff and there's not going to be court documents? Right? But he to this day is threatening people on Owen's behalf. And the video I just played, who whatever lunatic that is, is to this day threatening people on Owen's behalf. There's this guy, Charlie uh, Minor Vinny or Minor Vinny or whatever his name is. If you hate Owen, if you hate him, move on, bro. If you are right and he's bad, leave him alone. Printing shit of him is definitely not the move. Build your own thing better instead of focusing on what he's doing. And Adam's like, I'm suing him. These are the rewards for donations. Yeah, Adam made some like stickers or something. Uh, suing for what? Losing out on BJ's? Again, vernacular, lingo, slingo, all of the, uh, the milieu control, the environment of control Owen has set up for these low IQ, mentally ill people, gravy, crushing, bear, bear tart, gamma, builder buddy, all that shit. BJ's gay, this gay, that pay the gay way on and on and on and on and on. It's called the milieu control system. And that is part of this. This is his brainwashing being regurgitated. This is the cognitive bias. This is how you treat the gammas. This is how you treat the people who speak up against daddy. And Owen has trained them over and over, target after target, Joe Rogan, Crowder, Curtis Stone, made by Jim Bob, over and over. Owen has trained the sycophant, low IQ, mentally ill people how to act. And on top of that, he strokes them by, oh, you're a legend. Oh, you're crushing. You're a legend. You're a legend. And it becomes a self-fulfilling prophecy where they want, they want that admiration more from the big bear, from internet daddy. So it just, it's a, it's a vicious cycle. Owen also uses that dynamic as well. I talked about in a in a, in the yellow raincoat uh, video that I'll link in the description. They all consider themselves superior to everybody else. They don't see how mentally ill and the fact they are and the fact that they're in a cult. Suing for what? Losing out on BJ's? Something like that. You're going to donate or what? You know you want a sticker. 
I would literally die for Owen and his family if I had to. Look at this young kid. Does he look, I mean, seriously? I would literally die for Owen and his family if I had to. You think this is, the, these are the people that just bubble up to the surface. The, this is a, okay, then do this for me. And this is, this is a challenge, okay? I'm going to use my own Brandolini warfare against you bear tarts. Show me. Show me these kind of statements against anybody else who speaks up against Crowder or Joe Rogan. And I'll just name those two. Show me. Debunk what I'm saying. Debunk that this is this is a, a, a cult of lunatics. A cult of lost lunatics who hate women, who are misogynists, who are PDFs. The vast majority, in my opinion. They're sycophants, lost, mentally ill, with this delusion of an internet daddy. The father they never had. And Owen, again, you're not going to tell me, sir, you're a good person for manipulating, controlling, and emptying the pockets of these mentally ill people. You're going to tuck your kids in the bed tonight? Okay. I don't, I, I don't care because you're going to answer for this one way or another, right? Would you say to daddy, drop on your knees, pray to the Lord, that he saves your soul from burning in hell? What, where, what part of hell do you get led into for robbing mentally ill people? Because you don't have enough yet. A $1.5 million estate was not enough. A 40 some thousand dollar driveway wasn't enough, right? I showed everybody your big royalty income, or you showed everybody. You want them to know you feel like you're untouchable. Your king syndrome. And the whole time, you've activated a myriad of lunatics. And this here, ladies and gentlemen, is why another reason why I say Owen Benjamin is extremely dangerous. There was a story seven years ago that I covered. If you look on my channel on YouTube and you see what I do, you're going to see two primary entities at this point. One of them is named Tommy Sotomayor, which is one of the most evil entities I've ever investigated. There was a story seven years ago, and I covered this three or four times. I don't even know if any of those videos are still on, on the channel or not. A white man traveled to New York to kill black men. And quotations, make a statement, police say. This is the Washington Post, okay? A white man from Maryland who told police he traveled to New York to kill black men turned himself in on Wednesday, about 24 hours after he fatally stabbed a man he encountered on the street, officials said. Authorities described the suspect, a suspected attacker as someone who had long harbored feelings of hatred toward black men before violently acting on them this week. Police said he carried out the attack in a way that intended to draw attention. The reason why he picked New York is because it's the media capital of the world, said William Aubrey, assistant chief of the New York City Police Department, and he wanted to make a statement. New York police said that they charged James Harris Jackson, 28 years old, with murder. Police said Jackson encountered 66-year-old Timothy Cockman shortly after 11 p.m. on Monday and stabbed him multiple times. 
Cogman went to a police precinct to help and was brought to Bellevue Hospital, where he later died. Early Wednesday morning, a little more than 24 hours after the attack, Jackson walked into the police substation in Times Square and announced that he was wanted for murder. I'm the person you're looking for, Jackson told the patrol officers there. And uh, Aubrey said Aubrey said at a brief uh, briefing later Wednesday. Down through this article, there's always there's always the how should I say this? There's always the undercurrent, the underlying. Uh, cognitive bias you just have to know how to look for it where to look for it and consider like how much social media especially youtube is responsible for uh influence influencing people so once i saw this i really looked into it i I was following it closely A couple days later, this article shows up on Salon, which is a big publication. White supremacists who traveled to to New York to murder black men followed extremist, racist online groups who support Trump. Now, obviously, that's a very broad statement, and they're going to do that anytime they can, right? Okay, well, there's only a few names mentioned here. Alex Jones, Stephen Molyneux, and Tommy Sotomayor. Oh, Trump's mentioned in this too. Actually, they uh, they, they even named a couple of Tommy Sotomayor's videos, including... It's time for whites to start voicing their displeasure with blacks on white crime. And another Tommy Sotomayor video was blacks know that blacks are violent. So why does the white media pretend they are not? Now, I could talk for 10 years straight about Tommy Sotomayor, who's one of the most, in my opinion, insane, evil people on the planet. I'll tell you horror stories about Tommy Sotomayor, his family, his daughter, his mother, okay? His life, what he has done, his pizza that he would openly brag about when Backpage.com was up and running, okay? I could tell you horror stories about this monster. In fact, I'm going to link a a video right now in the description called Shut Up, Tommy. And it's only a couple minutes long. I want you to listen to that video. Every word of that video is Tommy Sotomayor on YouTube. That was all. There was no age restrictions on that content. He was sexualizing children, talking about 13, 14-year-old girls, their breasts, like on and on, telling it his daughter, when my daughter was nine, I told her, if you ain't going to fuck a guy, don't like on and on. He'd, he'd show on, he'd ax, and I'm throwing up quotations, accidentally walk in on his daughter when she was in the bathroom. They would shower together. Like, you have no idea how evil Tommy Sotomayor was, for real. But to the vast majority of people, even some people listening to my voice, they'll say, I like Tommy. What are you talking about? Oh, Tommy. Uh, ha, ha, ha. Um, you know, he was so he was so right. You know, Tommy, he wore a Trump hat. Yeah. You think they mention the same names by chance? I mean, again, you want to do probability stats? Here's Tommy on his own website. You can see Tommy Sotomayor today. This is live. Still bragging about it. Racist white man who murdered black man in New York was a fan of Tommy Sotomayor's message. Tommy would constantly say, if you're white, go get a gun. If a group of young black kids come up to you, start shooting. Let the law deal with it after. Like, 
He was, he would just incite race war, race war, racism, race war all the time. But he was very charming. He was very manipulative. And he was proud of this. This is only one of a couple instances. Proof that Tommy Sotomayor is dangerous by an article he wrote. When I covered this, I made this here. This is a uh, an image that I put in the video when I was covering it. This is Tommy pointing to, <laughs> this is uh, James, ja uh, James Jackson's YouTube subscriptions. Videos hit share and like. There's Tommy Sotomayor, one of his like 20 channels. One of his 20 some channels. And Tommy's looking at him. He's all happy, he's looking, laughing. He's happy. There he is. Tommy Sodom. That's his big channel. That was his big, big channel right there. And racist white man who murdered black man in New York was a fan of mine. He's all happy, proud, bragging about it. Yeah, don't let, don't get me started about this entity, this demonic entity right here. And who was funding him, okay? Well, let's take a look at this, guys. You guys aren't here to see about Tommy Sotomayor, but what we are going to look at is revealed. Uh, this is the Daily Mail. The cryptic messages the killer wrote on the day he stabbed his nurse girlfriend to death with a pair of scissors in a frenzied attack. Caitlin O'Brien, who was a nurse, she was only 31, was murdered at her Melbourne home on June 25th of 2019. Oh, but Mr. So Brand New, Owen Benjamin, oh, oh, this is Mike. Hey, you guys, I'm going to try podcasting, you guys. Hey, does my mic sound okay, you guys? How does this one sound? How does this one sound? How does this one sound? How does it? Hey, guys, we're going to try this together. Us, we, hey, did you ever hear of cows? Hey, guys, you know what beef is. Hey, you know what? How about a campground? Did you ever hear of Adam Sandler? Hey, guys, you, hey, we're going to do this together. Mr. So Brand New. Well, and since 2019, he's activating lunatics to kill their, this is a murderer, another murderer, fanboy. Woman-hating fanboy of Owen Benjamin. There's his girlfriend that he murdered, stabbed her with scissors multiple times. In the hours before her death, he had shared a series of bizarre messages on his Facebook page revealing he was losing his grasp on reality. The post included messages like, you can't rape humanity away. Boy, that's those are nice trigger words, right, Owen? You use rape a lot, right? Sacrifice is beautiful, but only ever for the right reasons. And I forgive you. He also posted a video of stand-up routine by Owen Benjamin called How to Be Married and Not Be Murdered. The mental instability was something O'Brien raised alarms about in a message exchange with her friend, the day before she was killed. He's out of his mind. He's having delusions. He's Jesus. I'm just scared to be around him. He's not making sense at all. He forced me to eat an apple today so I could be the Adam and Eve and be enlightened, she wrote. Onward to Bertaria. Onward to Bertaria. Do you, again, I'll ask you this question again. Do you understand the, 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 the scale of probability out of billions of people 
that several murderers and lunatics who have bubbled to the surface were activated by Owen Benjamin. And again, I could show you the only other person that I've gone in depth about at this level, Tommy Sotomayor. Do you, do you want to figure out the probability numbers now of what I'm talking about and how fucking dangerous Owen Benjamin really is? You have, you have no idea. I'm Covert Radio. Please check the links in the description. I have many videos coming up. Again, this is just part. Because you could see, if this, if I would have put this in the big video, the one with, would be five hours. And I can't do that. So please share this video. Like the video. Please check the description. If you want to support Covert Radio, this level of media Please become a member of the Covert Radio Tribunal. Allow me to do this more. This is a war. This is a war. And if you don't understand that, I feel sorry for you. But the reality is, whether you want to be a part of it or not, you are. Because these people that are being activated at any moment, the probability could come up to pull your number if you're not aware. This is brutally honest, fearlessly unapologetic talk radio. You guys take care. Have a good day. My father teaches this at a college. He teaches uh, mass communication, persuasion, public speech. He's a wizard. But I know how it works. And if people want to know, I will teach them. And you can look at my life. I bat a thousand. I know how it works. This is grab football, pal. Strap on your helmet. This is real. I know how it works. This is real. You are listening to Covert Radio.